Hello and welcome to this quick overview of the key categorization systems used by the media industry that attempts to outline the media's use of the socioeconomic life cycle and psychographic audience targeting models. Perhaps one of the first systems used to group audiences was the socioeconomic model that uses job status and social class to determine whether audiences belong to one of six groups. And although the socioeconomic model is widely critiqued, it is still employed on a global scale by media producers as a vehicle to help them think about their audience needs. Socioeconomic groups in this model are labelled as A, B or C1s and they're collectively called white collar workers. These are people who are employed in non-manual occupations. Group A, for example, are called higher professionals. They are doctors, lawyers, architects, accountants, and so on, and so on. While Group B, lower professionals, are teachers, social workers, or police officers, with Group C1 largely tied to office-based jobs as administrators, sales personnel, and such. Categories C2 and D are commonly called blue-collar workers, uh, with C1 representing skilled workers, plumbers and electricians, while category D represents unskilled manual workers, shop workers or factory operatives, for example. Category E, the last category, is reserved for those people who are reliant upon state benefits, those people who solely rely on uh, state pension or on income support. Socioeconomic categorization is useful in that it tells producers something about the incomes and educational attainment levels of their audiences, helping producers to frame products to meet audience needs or to include ingredients that generate audience relatability. However, the socioeconomic is, model is problematic. Its categories describe a world of, that is more 1950s than today's complex class-based landscape where, for example, plumbers and electricians can make significantly more money than Group B's teachers and social workers. A second and equally important way that audiences are categorised is via what's called the life cycle model, a system that uses age and family size as central factors to group audiences. Bachelors, for example, are likely to spend their available income or disposable income on entertainment or new home accessories. Their needs radically different to older audiences with dependent children. What are called newlyweds and full nester ones come, nest, come next. They are couples and describe audience groups who are settling down who have, or who have children under the age of five. These audiences, stereotypically, are more likely to make purchases that centre around the home, and because they have small children to look after, they're more likely to be spending more time in those new homes. Next comes full nester twos, and after that, empty nesters, and these describe those audiences with older dependents or children who have left home with audiences therefore thereafter graduating to the status of retired groups and lastly the solitary survivors, those elderly single people who have outlived their partners. Much like the socioeconomic groupings, the life cycle model helps producers to construct a working knowledge of how they might appeal, uh, create appeal within media narratives for each group, helping producers to understand the challenges and freedoms posed by each life cycle stage. The psychographic targeting system, the last system to be covered in this video, represents a significant refinement to all of the models covered thus far. Developed by a marketing company in the 1970s by Jung and Rubicam, uh, who realised that they had to develop an understanding of not just how old their audiences were or how much they earned, but also they understood that they needed to know how and why those audiences spent their disposable income in different ways. Jung and Rubicam's psychographic targeting system categorises audiences into seven groups, dependent upon not just a combination of age and economic factors, but also upon the beliefs, ideals and outlooks of each of those seven groups. Succeeders and aspirers, for example, are high earning groups, the former valuing established and trusted premium brands. Succeeders, for example, they like to shop in premium quality outlets like Waitrose. 
They have lots of money, but they like to spend that money on trusted and established brands, on cars like Land Rovers, for example, or BMWs. Aspirers, likewise, are high earners, but unlike succeeders, they like to show off their wealth with bling goods. They prefer an Audi TT over a Volvo, or they wear designer labels in order to make visible their wealth and status. Middle income groups, conversely, include groups called reformers and mainstreamers. Reformers, for example, are more likely to work in the public sector. They're likely to be teachers or social workers and so on, where they can exercise their need to do social good. This liberally minded group are also more likely to buy products that are ethically sourced or that demonstrate environmentally friendly credentials. As such, reformers are targeted with virtue signalling ad campaigns or with products that celebrate social diversity. Mainstreamers, conversely, according to Jung and Rubicam, value family values above all else, and importantly, they represent the largest group in Jung and Rubicam's psychographic model. Tapping into their mass spending power as such can bring big spend benefits for advertisers and media producers. Mainstreamers' tight budgets, though, means that products that are aimed at them must represent value for money, while also emphasising the how products might be used as family time experiences. Young and Rubicam system also devi- defines two low income groups, the resigned and the depressingly titled struggler group. People who make up the resigned psychographic group tend to be older audiences whose tastes have become fixed as they have matured. The resigned also have traditional values. These audiences revere or look up to the royal family, or they might question diverse gender identities. They enjoy exploring products that demonstrate traditional values. Targeting resigned groups requires as such that producers mix tradition, nostalgia and value for money into their end products. Strugglers, conversely, usually represent a younger audience demographic, a demographic who are reliant on state benefits. And, perceiving themselves as victims of society, strugglers see little value in contributing to society's well-being. Strugglers, as such, live for today. They are high consumers of fast food and seek immediate pleasure by spending what little money they have on alcohol or gambling. A final and economically anomalous group are those that Jung and Rubicam call explorers, usually composed of younger audience members who have some disposable income. Explorers embrace new experiences and are usually the first people to queue up for new technologies. The explorer shuns package holidays, preferring off-track adventures, adventures that they themselves have crafted. They are those people who queue up at midnight to buy the latest iPhone release. They love gimmicks. They embrace novelty. To find out more about how these systems, the life cycle model, the socioeconomic model, and Jung and Rubicam's psychographic system To find out how they used to craft set texts, keep an eye out for other essential media theory set text videos that deal with audience targeting. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe using the button below. Thanks.